A potentially terrifying scenario playing out as we approach September 11th. Nearly a dozen airplanes are missing, flat out missing, from the airport in Tripoli, raising new fears of the possibility of another terror attack from the air. Take a look at these pictures that are stoking concerns. We cannot absolutely confirm their authenticity, but they were purportedly posted online uh, by Islamist rebels showing themselves with airplanes that they captured when they overran the Tripoli International Airport in Libya. Bill Gertz broke the story. He is senior editor of the Washington Free Beacon. How do a dozen airplanes just go missing, Bill? Well, John, here's what I know. Uh, multiple U.S. officials with access to intelligence reports told me that they, these alarming reports were circulated within the U.S. government over the past couple of weeks, indicating that 11 commercial jets in Libya had gone missing. And the fear is that these are being taken over by Islamists and could be used in 9-11 uh, type suicide bombing attacks, uh, either within the region or outside of the region. The, the particular jet that we just had up was a fairly small regional jet, not the kind that could reach the United States, but there are Airbus A320s and 330s that, in, depending on the configuration, can have significant range. Those are also missing, aren't they? Right. Uh, the U.S. intelligence community is investigating this. They're trying to confirm these reports. They're looking to see if they can account for some 27 aircraft that belong to two state-owned Libyan airlines. Uh, the real issue here is that Libya is spinning out of control and becoming a failed state uh, run by Islamists linked to al-Qaeda. And once that happens, uh, we've got a real threat on our hands, uh, whether it's from aircraft or terrorists themselves uh, conducting attacks. Yeah, because the, the fear is they could use these jets as, as guided missiles the way they were used on 9-11, or they could load them up with terrorists, land them at a civilian airport, and, and all of a sudden guys with AK-47s come boiling out. Right. Uh, it's not an easy operation to do something like that. First, you're going to need suicide bombers who can fly an aircraft. Uh, we know that that's been done in the past. Uh, you need fuel for the jets. The Libyans have that. They have an infrastructure for that. So this is a real serious potential threat, at least to the officials that I talk to. I know the administration is trying to spin this as if it's not a serious threat. But again, the people that I talk to were taking it very serious. Yeah. Let's uh, also uh, look at what's going on or what we've learned about what's happened in this country where one of the two Americans we know of who was killed fighting for ISIS apparently had a job at the Minneapolis airport, had security clearances that gave him access to airplanes? Yeah, this is, uh, again, this is the, the cross-section of the kind of people that are uh, leaving the U.S. and joining this uh, jihad in the Middle East. Uh, again, there's a number of about 100 of these people. Now, somebody with access to uh, an airport could understand the security of an airport, could understand things that would be useful in conducting a, uh, an attack using an aircraft in the future. Abdurrahman Mohammed was his name. He had nine children, and he was supporting them supposedly on the salary of a, of a guy who's cleaning airplanes? Well, yeah, that's certainly strange. Uh, obviously, uh, we have to really tighten up our security on this kind of a threat because I think it's only a matter of time before some of these jihadists who have gone to Syria and gotten that training uh, bring it back home. Uh, just uh, this week on Twitter, ISIL, the, the terrorist group, was bragging that it planned to conduct attacks in the United States by yeah. blowing up vehicles. Yeah, well, you get a lot of stuff right. Let's hope you're wrong on this one, Bill, Bill Gertz from the Washington Free Beacon. Thank you. Thank you.